بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Continue on in our study of Asul Sunnah by Imam Ahmed, we reach the sixth le- lesson. <clears throat> and we already st- spoke about Qiyas and some of the beneficial uh, fawaid that Shaykh Ashatri mentioned, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. And we reached a portion of the treaties where Imam Ahmed said, after mentioning about the, the Quran, and that the Sunnah explains the Qur'an, and that there is no Qiyas regarding the Sunnah, because uh, the Sunnah here is, that's mentioned is regarding Aqidah. We're talking about Aqidah. There's no Qiyas in Aqidah that you make a, you know, these analogies uh, pertinent to Aqidah. And especially with regards to the uh, rights of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't make qiyas between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes and the attributes of the creation. We don't make a comparison between the two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in His divine names and attributes. And the creation is imperfect and full of mistakes and full of uh, it is nux that there is we're far from uh, perfect and we're limited in our abilities where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited in his subhanahu wa ta'ala divine abilities like the example of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, being sami'un basir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing and all seeing but Although we possess the attribute of hearing and seeing, for those who are blessed with hearing and sight, then ours is very limited. Ours will fade away, etc. So there's no comparison, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same ayah, There is nothing comparable to him, and he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Then... Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala said wala tadrab laha al-amthal wala tudrik bil-uqul wala ahwa inma huwa ittiba' wa tark al-hawa Imam Ahmed said do not make uh, examples meaning examples and comparisons with the sunnah and do, and, and and that the intellect, because the intellect, intellectual capacity is limited, it doesn't um, uh, register these things. And do not also use hawa, desires, and bid'a uh, with regards to the sunnah and understanding and, and issues of aqidah. Avoid bid'a and avoid using your desires to rule you with regarding to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this Kuwait of Ahl Sunnah. And verily it is, meaning what is permissible and what we should be doing is following uh, following uh, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, following the Nusus without questioning the text of the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Leaving off desires and leaving off desires. That's what the minhaj or the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is. It's based on those quiet and principles. So here's what the Sheikh said. He broke it down. He said, Where, where Imam Ahmed said, al And do not make uh, for the Sunnah or Aqidah. Uh, Examples. He says, "Yani, أن الأقاعدة لا تثبت بواسطة مجرد تمثيل وأما بنسبة للمباحث الأخرى غير متعلقة بالله عز وجل فلا بس بإثباتها بواسطة القياس ومن أمثلة هذا إثبات البعث فإن الله تعالى قد استدل على البعث يوم القيام يوم القيامة بقياسه بقياسه على إيجاد النشاط الأولى 
So this is very, very beneficial and, and, and relevant for us. The Sheikh said, so we don't make, with regards to the Sunnah, and again, the Sunnah here we're talking about is uh, Aqidah. Is, you know, the Sunnah regarding Aqidah. So he says, Yani, and that uh, Aqidah, that there's no, we don't make examples to affirm our Aqidah. So we don't use philosophy, we don't use examples, we don't use uh, other forms of examples and so forth. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. In order to uh, affirm our aqidah. Our aqidah comes from the nasus, comes from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And Allah makes His own qiyas in the Qur'an. And He's going to give us an example. And so, uh, especially with with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Azza wa Jal, that there is no, uh, we don't affirm these things, but other, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes and so forth, by other than his, uh, by other than the nasus, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then he gives an example. He says, and for examples of this, where it is affirmed by qiyas, by analogy, which is contained in the Quran. So this is also nasus for us. For us, it's nasus. But our Lord subhanahu wa taala, it was His own. Qiyas subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, what is referred to as, as Qiyas, a type of uh, making a resemblance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a resemblance in affirming the day of judgment, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by he affirmed the day of judgment in the Quran by making an analogy between the original creation, how easy it was for him to create us in the first place, and likewise. This is the analogy. It is easy for him to cr- raise us up again, resurrect us from uh, from dead, from death, and bring us back to life on the day of judgment to be judged for the way we lived our lives. So this is called. This is a type of qiyas from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala from the Quran. <laughs> Then the other statement Imam Ahmed said <laughs> Alhamdulillah uh, Imam Ahmed also made uh, he, he made the statement Wala tudrik bil aqul So also we do not gain our aqidah just from our intellect Otherwise everyone would believe whatever they wanted as we see is the case with many of the new modern day uh, self help, <coughs> alhamdulillah, self help and other movements where they be- they make their own belief systems. Excuse me, alhamdulillah, they make their own belief systems based on their own desires. Not based on the nasus, but we as Muslims, our belief, and this is the belief, this is where Ahl Sunnah takes their creed, it comes from the Quran and the Sunnah. It comes from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those usul of, uh, of the, the religion, the dalil, the evidence. This is where we take our, our, our aqidah, how we understand who our Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. And this is not something, these issues of aqidah and so forth, it is not something that your intellect would just derive on its own. For example, if someone never heard about Islam, never uh, read anything of the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and they're unaware of the Islamic creed, they're not going to just stumble on and say, hey, you know, I think there's six pillars of Iman. I believe that there's a day of judgment. I believe in that. No, we know these things and we believe these things from the nasus. This is how we understand. This is how our Akita is founded on. It isn't just someone going out, for example, out in the woods like this and 
meditating and then they're going to come up with all the Aqidah of Islam and they're going to believe with sound Aqidah. That is not the way it works. That the Aqidah, our creed, is formed, it comes from, our belief comes from uh, the Quran and the Sunnah. And likewise, as Imam Ahmed pointed out, Wala al ahwa. Also, it's not from our desires. Our Aqidah is not affirmed based upon our desires, that we would come upon it, nor would we affirm it, that we say, you know, I've read in the Quran this, you know, that sounds right, it feels right to me. So, you're, you're going with your desires. But no, we t- taslim with the nasus. We hear and obey. We believe the Quran and we believe in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that which is authentic. We believe in that, without doubt. We don't follow our desires. We don't use our desires to determine whether it's sound or not. You know, I believe in some of those things and some of those things I don't believe. This is what you'll find many uh, people in other faiths doing with their religion who've moved away from their, their own core beliefs. And you'll find also people who say they're Muslim saying this, but if you say this as a Muslim or believing you're a Muslim, in fact, you've said statements of disbelief. You've left the fold of Islam, that you only believe some of the book and you disregard others. Oh, those stories are nice. Those are stories of the ancients, those stories of the prophets. But I don't really believe them. I owe the Billah min dhalika. That it's not up, up for us to pick and choose what we believe and what feels good. You know, the Sharia punishments, I don't believe in them. I don't feel comfortable with them. Why don't we try something new? Why don't we try a new democratic approach? You know, I really don't feel all those restrictive laws are applicable to me. I think if I have the desire to, uh, you know, to support same-sex marriage or all this other stuff, or if I want 27 girlfriends, hey, that's, that's how I feel. I feel that I'm not hurting anybody, and I still want to be a Muslim, and I still believe Islam is okay, but I feel that's okay for me. No, the Sunnah, Aqidah, is not affirmed that way, nor is Aqidah... Uh, nor is that a part of, you know, we're not going to realize your Aqidah through your desires, nor can you affirm and authenticate your Aqidah with your desires, meaning your Aqidah, your your, uh, desires are not the way that you determine, you cannot determine and pick and choose what you believe and what you don't believe, but rather it is based on submitting to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why, uh, and the Imam, the Sheikh said, he said, and this is why also that uh, that you could that Ahlus Sunnah is in opposition to Ahla Ahwa. That that they're the opposite. It's the opposite because Ahlus Sunnah they affirm their creed based on the Quran. They affirm their belief, their creed, their minhaj, and so forth based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Fahim and the Salaf of this Ummah. Whereas Ahl Bid'ah, but Ahl Ahwa specifically, which is the opposite, they affirm their Aqidah, their creed and so forth, based on their desires, based on their Ahwa, based on their whatever they feel is comfortable and correct, or whatever their Imam, whatever Shubahat that they have. This is how they affirm their creed. So that's why they're in opposition to each other. That's the differing, and that's where they oppose one another in their very essence. And then the Sheikh said, and this is why the Tariqa, he said regarding the statement of Imam Ahmed, that the, where Imam Ahmed said, إِنَّمَا هُوَ اتِّبَاعَ وَتَرْكَ ahwa." that Ahlul Sunnah that they their tariqah or their path is taslim with the nusus is accepting the text the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam following it 
and leaving off the desires, leaving off the doubtful things, leaving off using their desires with regards to the Sharia Nusus, that when it comes to issues of Iman and other issues of creed, Ahl Sunnah, they accept, oh, Iman, it fluctuates and because the Nusus show us this, they accept that. They don't debate and argue and use their desires to determine what they believe and what they don't believe. And we'll talk more about this in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.